This is Catch All Rory, adventurer extraordinaire and my character in the world of Elden Ring. Today we bring Rory into the physical world with a custom sculpted me. Before we go into the build, we first go into context. Catch All Rory was a jack of all trades character. I started as a wretch, meaning I only had a club to my name, and opted to go in as blind as possible using new gear as I came across it. This was in fact the supreme choice as this made the beginning game fun as shit. Eventually I settled on the following loadout. A pair of blood daggers called the Reduvia, courtesy of a friend giving me theirs, a whip capable of taking weapon buffs, a short bow with a slew of specialty and elemental arrows, a parrying dagger for dunking on 1v1 duels, and a dragon seal for casting faith and arcane spells. Obviously, if you've never played Elden Ring, that doesn't mean much to you, but don't worry, because this video doesn't have any spoilers anyways, and I highly suggest you go play it. But anyways, while many of my friends usually had a penchant for specialization, opting for usually like a single beefed up weapon, I took a broad approach, always having a trick up my sleeve or the tool for the job. Regardless of the situation, I had something for it, leading to his character nickname, Catchall. At the beginning of the game, I headed south, stumbling into an area called the Weeping Peninsula, where I found a merchant selling a quaint selection of goods. Here I purchased the Iron Helmet and the Scale Mail, unknowingly donning the armor set I would wear for the next 90 hours, only changing my fashion for the last 25 hours, maybe, of that first playthrough. Many of the armor sets in Elden Ring are extravagant and distinct, but the simplistic charm of the Iron Helmet and the Scale Mail really grew on me, and as people around me played dress up, I trucked on with my trusty hat and jacket. For this sculpt, I chose to sculpt on an armature, mainly because I suck at proportions, but also because it was four bucks and it made my life a lot easier, so whatever man, got off my back. For this blank, I made a blank man on Hero Forge, the ever popular custom mini site. Uh, made sure he was decently sized for a 32mm base and holding a dagger. I then waited 9 years for them to send the file to me, where I then trimmed off the very bottom base, uh, sized it in Chitu Box, and printed them out on my resin printer. After adhering him to a base with some super glue and sketching out my plan on the mini himself, I decided to work from the bottom up, starting with his boots. This allowed me to use the top of his head to brace my hand for most of the process to really spin him around and get him into the angles and details I needed to get. The main key of the sculpting process was really just patience. Not only did I have to remind myself to stop and let the green stuff cure before adding more detail, but many parts of the overall model were made in multiple sessions as to start with the major shapes and sculpt finer detail on top of them, such as this bottom ridge of the greaves. After finishing the greaves, I moved upward, establishing the bottom of the tunic and sketching out where the armor scale mail hangs with my sharpie. After finishing the waist wrap that goes on top of it, I jumped ship to the left arm, sculpting the gauntlet, the upper sleeve, then the ragged wraps on top of the forearm after the gauntlet had cured. I used the top of my knife to attempt to add a worn look to the bandages, and it looked okay on the arm, not so much on the waist. Whatever. For the torso, I started by throwing on more scale mail and the shoulder strap seen on the left flank. Afterwards, I made a flat piece of green stuff and stuck it onto the back to make the worn out white cape. I've taken to using lotion for most of my flat green stuff needs for like smaller jobs. I find it works just as well as oil uh, with small pieces, and although it dries out faster than oil, it usually leaves my hands nice and soft, so that's, you know, kind of a bonus. After connecting the cape, I add the scale cloak's collar and attempt to add a second layer to the cape. I didn't use enough putty on it though, so it came out kind of short, and short enough to where it got covered by the top cloak. Uh, I also take a second to wrap a line of green stuff over the mini's face and stick it to the back of the head, long enough for it to cure so I could trim the ends and adhere it with some super glue. A quick tangent about the iron helmet. In its description, it's stated to have a scarf to protect against airborne particles, 
but on the model, the scarf clearly does not cover his nose. We're two years into a pandemic, my guys. The mask goes over the nose. Regardless, my mini writes this wrong purely out of respect to community health guidelines and not simply to prevent me from having to paint a skin tone. Now for the outer cloak part that lays over the tunic. I start off by laying down the surface of the cloak in parts. The seams between blobs didn't really matter too much as it would get covered the next step anyways, so I mainly focused on getting the thickness and the silhouette of the cloak right. After it was mapped out, I defined the outer ridge and used my knife to wear it down a little bit. Then I went through the painful process of attaching every single one of these scales individually. No trick here, just cutting a small dots worth, worth of green stuff and sticking it on securely. It took longer than I expected, but I explicitly remember this time being distracted by Final Destination 3 for some reason. It had been a long time since I'd seen that movie, and yeah, it still kind of sucks. A bit of a time jump here since I got really into sculpting the helmet and the dagger. I just forgot to set the camera up for it all. The helmet was done in layers just like everything else. First the main shape, then the trim, then the front visor. I also used some spare green stuff from previous sessions pulled out to a long string to form the pull strings on the front of the cloak. Here I'm slowly working through Reduvia, adding each ridge on its like bony blade. A quick game tangent, but Reduvia is a solid blade weapon, especially when dual wielding. Some lighter armor enemies and invaders just really couldn't handle the fast dagger barrage and bleed would proc extremely quickly, but the base damage quickly becomes very unimpressive. You become reliant on fishing for those bleed procs, which is why I took to using a whip as a backup weapon. Not only was it blunt damage for slashing resistant enemies, but it allowed me to use buff spells and greases to capitalize on any damage type I needed to. With that level of versatility, the striking damage, and being my PvP weapon of choice in Dark Souls 3, uh, I'm telling you, people really don't know how to fight a whip. Like, they just shut down. <laughs> Alright, I got him. Little baby bitch boy! What was I talking about? Oh yeah, um... At work, I had carved out a short bow out of stacked styrene sheets. Uh, the short bow was another big part of my versatility. Uh, not only did the short bow allow me to keep my distance from foes and pepper them with a slew of specialty arrows, especially poison and rot arrows, bleed arrows too. It allowed me to fight safely on horseback like some kind of ancient Mongolian horseback archer. Being a big part of my early game kit for so long, I knew I couldn't leave the bow out of the picture, so I opted to have the mini wearing the bow on his back and use some fishing line to wear the bow, you know, like it's slung over his shoulder. After the glue dried on that fishing line, I trimmed the string and Wash the mini of all my nasty tool drool. I lick my sculpting tools while I work. I'm sorry. But I don't lick my brushes though. Just just the tools. I used to dip in water, but I don't know. I've <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry guys. But anyway, that's an overview of the sculpting process. After putting on some sand and some cat litter for the basing, I primed it all black and got to see it all under one cohesive color, and I was really happy of how it looked. With dagger, whip, and Bo immediately seen at a glance, it was undoubtedly the walking Swiss army knife I had grown fond of over my playthrough. Well, you can't see his spellcasting emblem, but whatever, it's it's the dragon seal. Anyways, please, please explain to me how you sculpt that, like, meaningfully. I'm just gonna say it's in his bag or something, whatever. For painting, I experimented with colors for a good while before deciding on how I wanted to approach it. Uh, while Elden Ring is certainly more vibrant, than its doom and gloom, browny gray cousins of the Soul series, especially Dark Souls 3, Jesus Christ. I still wanted to keep a bit of the gritty, washed out temperature of the overall color scheme. Working from the hard to reach inside of the model to the outer bits, I mixed up a few flavors of greens and browns for the overall color scheme. The metal bits in particular were painted silver and the cloak in olive green compared to the greenish tan of the tunic. Then all of that together was treated to an out of focus black wash. I expected to need to do some layering from here, but just the black wash on the base coat kind of gave me a good vibe, so I decided not to tinker with it too much, besides just some basic edge highlighting for like, 
you know, sectional clarity at a distance. I, I like the colors as it was, and, you know, I sculpted a lot of individual bits, goddammit. I want to be able to see it from an arm's length, okay? As I began to paint the ground, I realized in hindsight that I was pretty underleveled and undergeared for a large majority of the game. Where my friends blazed through with no problems, I constantly struggled with simple damage output. Not only was a large amount of my money going to arrows and consumables, but the nature of how I played the early game had me hold back on using some upgrade stones on my weapons, as I didn't know if something better was around the corner, but it's fine though. I have a resin printer. It's time to call in some backup. The best of the best. Then let us begin. I am the great jar warrior, Iron Fist Alexander. Lend me strength, O oh warriors within. Let us become one champion together. And there we go. Catch all Rory and the surprise guest miniature, Iron Fist Alexander. Well, not a huge surprise if you keep up with my community posts. Not to toot my own horn here, but I think I'm getting better at this sculpting thing. Normally I do a lot of sculpting for like the big demons and amorphous things like in my Chaos Space Marine army, but practicing on smaller miniatures like this and I I don't know, I feel like I'm feel like I can I can mechanically feel myself improving and it's nice. I I enjoy this. But sorry this video took so long by the way. My first run of Elden Ring was 120 hours. I then immediately started another run for the 100% Steve achievement. Not a full run, not exploring everything, just getting to the end. And then after that I may have also beaten the game two more times afterwards. And I'm working on a level one playthrough. But that's not important, okay? Look, I just, I just really like adventure games, okay? Another big delay uh, was the resin printer setup. Conditions have changed for it a little bit or how I've got everything set up, but I was able to get everything back online to print the armature. I really wanted to sculpt on an armature, and I'm glad I did because it was really fun, and I will probably be doing it again in the future for builds like this. Uh, instead of having to build the whole mini, all I have to do is dress it up, and that's honestly not too hard to work around. But if I'm able to, I'll probably do it this way instead of making a little like small armature because again I am very bad at proportions. I hope you guys enjoyed the bit of Elden Ring story time intertwined with the build. I try not to go too in-depth with build details since I'm not sure if people want super in-depth details or just keep it to an overview. I feel like all the Elden Ring talk was pretty important for context as well you know. I, I, you, you guys know I like giving you context for why I do things. Maybe it's not as important as I think it is, but I feel like it's important as part of the video structure, storyline, whatever. But I don't know. Unless someone tells me to stop, I'm going to keep doing it, and you can't stop me. Regardless, thank you again for your time. I truly appreciate everyone who gives me their time, gives me a bit of your life force as you watch these videos as you slowly decay to the winds of time and I suck up any residual energies of your ether. All right, it's six o'clock in the morning. Good night. I am a great magician. Your cloak is blue. <laughs>